Welcome to the Interesting Podcast with Jedi Brian, episode number 33. Now this episode is somebody I've ordered on for quite a bit, um, but as the story usually goes, scheduling and whatnot. But uh, but this time, the guest is uh, Charlotte Arity, who, apart from being one of the hosts of my favorite Star Wars podcast, is just an all-around cool person. We talk about uh, traveling, which we've both done a lot of, um, where exactly she's from, That'll make sense when you listen to it. Uh, thoughts into episode eight? I mean, the last half an hour just... I'm not going to lie to you guys. This just turns into a Star Wars podcast, which is great because she is a great person to talk to about the wars. We talk about our mutual love of Padme and our experiences meeting Hayden Christensen. Um, but yeah, this was really fun. Uh, you guys are really going to like Charlotte. Uh, we talk about uh, working in a test kitchen. I didn't even know what that was before this, but now I do. And it's kind of cool. She's been to Iceland. Uh, she she just came back from Paris. A um, lot of traveling stuff. I, I love talking to people about traveling. Because it's a big world out there. And uh, it's beautiful. And you should see it. But yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to get right into this. Uh, enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 33, with Charlotte Arity. Theme song time! Another it's one good. of those. You just you just figure it out and hope it yeah. records afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> I, I did an interview once with uh, this cosplayer. She's a friend of mine named Danica Rockwood, uh-huh. and we recorded. It was like an hour and a half. It went like extra long. We like cried. It was one of the best like interviews I've ever oh, done. Oh no! Oh and no! It, <laughs> and uh, uh, I record in person on an uh, H4n Zoom recorder, mm-hmm. and I accidentally pressed the play button instead of the record button. No. So. <laughs> I knew that story was going there, oh. but I just didn't want it to go there. <laughs> oh man, it was the worst. And then and then uh the interview that we ended up recording anyway is uh we call it the tribute to the greatest podcast in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. It worked out. It worked out. So your your Skype says you are in Georgia, but you're not in Georgia. I'm not in Georgia. You're... I should probably change that. I'm in Boston. <laughs> You're I live in Boston now. Oh, <laughs> so. okay. You were yeah. born in Georgia. No. <laughs> you were I was born, born in Connecticut. That is different Georgia, than most of the things that I said. <laughs> and lived in Georgia for like most of my life. Okay. I have a similar thing with Florida. I was born in North Carolina and then at six moved to Florida. Nice. It's been a majority so, of So like, do you, do you say that you're from North Carolina or I do. Florida? I say I'm from North Carolina because I remember it very well. Mm-hmm. And Florida is a... Um, it's its own breed of a uh, state, I guess is the the, the nice way to put it. It's very, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, <laughs> headlines usually involve uh, Florida, and uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's true, Florida man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That. That's exactly yeah. right. Um, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, I prefer forests, and there are none here. Mm. <laughs> but true, just the Everglades. Exactly. What part of Georgia did you grow up in? Uh, north of Atlanta. Oh, right on, right on. Yeah, I've been to Atlanta. It's massive. It's been huge. Quite a few times. My, I've been to. I went to. I was in Covington for a while. Nice. Co- Covington's very nice. My brother was stationed in Savannah for the last like oh. three years. Cool. Yeah, nice state. I love Georgia. Me too. Georgia it's is great. great. You went to school but... there, I assume. No, I went to school. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> I went to school in Massachusetts. <laughs> that okay? We're you know we're gonna start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You're from okay. Connecticut. <laughs> this is my life story. Yeah, here, okay. we, here we go. I my, my parents are from Connecticut, New Jersey, and went to college in Connecticut. I was born in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. We moved to Georgia. I lived in Georgia for most of my life. Mm-hmm. And then in high school, my family moved to London, England, and we lived in London. What? Um, and then I went to college in Massachusetts, but my family still lives in Georgia. And I just moved from Georgia to Boston for a new job. 
So that's wow. my story. I'm so glad you <laughs> laid that out and just kind of grazed over London. <laughs> How, what, explain, London. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very different from the other things you laid out. Yeah. How did that um, come to be? My dad's job brought us over there and it was awesome. Cool. How long were you there? Um, two years. Two years. That's a long time. Freshman and sophomore, sophomore year of high school. And I went to high school there. Really? Never... So half of yes. your high school was actually in another country. Yeah. Um, I went to an American school though. I didn't go to like a British school with uniforms or anything. Um, I had to, if we were going to move back, I had to stay on the same curriculum and everything. So, sure. but it was great. I, I recommend anyone moving abroad if they have the opportunity. Sure. Sure. I was in London last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. I was there for five days and um, I was there for Brexit, which was, which was really fun. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I didn't know that was, that was happening so soon. So I was yeah. there two days before the vote, the day of the vote, and two days after. Oh my gosh! It was it did was an interesting week. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Did you go to Star Wars Celebration there? No, I did not. I did not. I uh, me neither. Poor planning, because I was there in June. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was that's, that's on me. That's too close. Yeah. Too close. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That that was on me, but I made up for it because I spent like a week and a half in Ireland right before that. Oh, and cool. I went to, oh, went to Skellig Michael and awesome. I, I saw pretty much all of Ireland. We drove That's like so cool. thirteen hundred miles in a week and a half. That's what I really I really want to do that. That's on my list. I highly, highly recommend it. Ireland's actually I've been to let's see, now twenty, I think, countries outside of the US and Ireland is, is my favorite by far. You're number one. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fairy tale world. It looks at. It. It's just so green. <laughs> it, it it is. It is. We. I went to. Um. I have this video saved on my phone from the Giants Causeway in Northern Ireland. Oh. And I just have. It's like twenty seconds of video that I just like sat on a rock and just recorded life for twenty seconds, and it looks like a screensaver. Oh my gosh. And I was like, this is this is real life here. This is why there's folklore because of places like this. That's so awesome. It was really. Did good. you see? Did you see puffins on oh, Skellig Michael? Thousands. Thousands yeah, that's what puffins. I I needed to know if the porgs were actually a, a, a real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are for sure. I mean, it, what's funny about uh, Skellig Michael is uh, so the Irish are really serious about protecting their heritage, and mm -hmm. Skellig Michael is this like rock monastery from you know hundreds of years ago. It's like nine miles off the coast. It takes almost an hour by boat to get there. Mm -hmm. There are no safety rails whatsoever <laughs> because they're like that would desecrate this this place so the whole time they're like listen when you're going up go up very slowly because if you fall you're dead we can't save oh my you God. <laughs> and when you go down they're like don't be too proud go on your butt if you have to because if you fall you're dead we cannot save you <laughs> so oh my it kind of it adds to the whole like wow this is this is real and it yeah. is covered in puffins that's so which, awesome which i i don't know why i thought they would be bigger when I when I saw them, I was like, you know, they're they're gonna be like, I don't know, seagull, maybe a little bit bigger than a seagull. They're tiny little birds. No, they're tiny. Uh, Caitlin and I saw them in Iceland, and I just can't. They're they're really small, so it makes me think like, are the porgs like really small? I I don't. Right. Right. <laughs> we're we're gonna see. I know. So. I mean, the only size relation we have is Chewy, but he's yeah, exactly. massive. So. Yeah, you can't even really tell about yeah. that. Please, <laughs> please. No, I'm so pumped. And it was when when I was going up the stairs, um, there's because puffins like burrow, you know, and they <laughs> they they were in their holes and they would just like kind of what's the best way to put it, not growl at you, but kind of like they sound like little baby cows. So like <laughs> so like when you're going up, you just hear, and you're like, what is going <laughs> on? And there's these tiny little puffins that are just like not okay with you being there. Which is going to be like the caretakers, hopefully. Yeah, but yeah. I I can't wait. I'm it's so going to be great. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, but, so soon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you've you've traveled quite a bit. You're just in Paris. Yeah, how, I was just in Paris. How was um, that? It was awesome. I love Paris. I've been a couple times, and I lived there for one summer, um, in college, and 
it was awesome to go back and I've never been in the fall. I, I think it's completely underrated. No one goes in the fall that I see. And I was like, wow, this is gorgeous. So sure. Was it cold? Everyone needs to go. It was cold, yeah. but if living in Boston, like it's all relative at this point where sure. it's, I'm not like, un, I'm not, it wasn't weird. You know, right, <laughs> I was right. prepared. Sure. Sure. When I when you went to London, what was like the first thing that you noticed about it? Um, about the city itself. Yes. So I moved to London, and the, it was the first time I had ever been to Europe. Actually, it was like when we were moving, mm-hmm. um, and I was thirteen, and I didn't like any food, um, besides like plain food. Sure. <laughs> um, sure. and I was like. My, the first place we went was an Indian restaurant, and I was so out of the box. Yeah. I think. I, I, it's just uh, – that was basically the first thing I noticed was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to change basically most things about myself to right. just here. Sure. It's <laughs> and crazy I, how curry is a big thing in London. Oh, yeah. It's the national dish. Huge. And it's actually my favorite food now. And it's wow. just like – it's funny how much has like changed in terms of my – my my taste buds and palate and everything completely changed when I was in Europe and sure. I work for food media now and like yeah. I I love food I'm a huge foodie and it's just funny how I look back at London when we moved to London in that distinct moment of me being like I'm gonna have to change everything <laughs> right now <laughs> like, this is different <laughs> you yeah. have to survive from there on out yeah that's awesome I'm sure being a foodie is a uh, pretty great when you're in Paris which is known for their food yes that's so amazing. I have not been to Paris. My parents have. You have to go. Yeah. Is it good? <laughs> it's Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I think that it probably gets a bad rap these days because it's like kind of a touristy city. You know, everyone sure. goes to Paris. It feels like a thing where, um, I don't know, there's like certain monuments that you see all the time. But I sure. do think that it's just so beautiful. It's totally worth it. Right on. Right on. You got to go. <laughs> I, my parents went because I, I t- actually took them with me on the trip to Ireland and whatever. And uh, we were in Ireland for a week and a half. We we're in London for five days. And then I had to come back. But my parents kept going on. So they took that train from London to Paris. Oh, yeah. The like real famous, super fast one. Mm-hmm, the Eurostar. W- yes. So awesome. And then they went into Amsterdam and Brussels and all that stuff. Uh, but they talk about Paris and just the food. And at the time, there was. Um, I forget what it's called. It wasn't the World Cup. It was another uh, football. Tennis? It was was soccer, but it was like, it wasn't the World Cup. It was something else. I I know nothing about soccer, so I'm just not going to be able to help you here. (laughs) I'm with you. I actually love soccer, but I I don't have a dog in the race. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy it. I always describe soccer as like watching football, but there's an interception every like three seconds. Yeah, like, it's the thing is I like soccer. I just don't really know much about it. Like yeah. I think I'd, I'd prefer to go to a soccer game in Europe over a football game in America. I think. But. I, I agree. I agree. It's a. It's a. I don't. Well, because football is kind of a cultural thing here, but over there it's like the whole country comes together and like shuts down towns. Mm-hmm. We, when we were in Belfast, Ireland was playing, and the woman who was checking us into the hostel was like, "You've got 15 minutes, and then I'm leaving." We're like, what? And they're like, <laughs> Ireland is playing, and I'm going to the pub down the street. We're like, okay, well, we need to get checked in, please. <laughs> but it was cool. It was very, very cool. How was Iceland? Oh, it was so awesome. I it was awesome. Been and they love it. It's like my one of my favorite places. I hesitate to say my favorite place, but it, sure. it's up there. It's really up there. With It was such a great trip. Caitlin, my co-host on my podcast. Oh, yes. Um, and I went right after we graduated college in 2015. Mm-hmm. And Caitlin had like this wild idea that we were going to go to Iceland. And at the time, like now Iceland, I feel like has kind of crossed over into like a normal place to visit in Europe. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people are going, they have stopovers and on Iceland air that make it affordable and easy. Sure. But back then, it was, like, just starting to become a thing. So everyone kind of thought we were crazy, and I kind of did, too. And then I started looking at photos and, like, understanding a little bit why she wanted to go. And I was all in. Sure. (laughs) So what we did was we rented a car, like a big car. And it was the beginning of 
June and we did this thing called the Ring Road, which goes all the way around the country. Um, and we went through like every single climate ever and what? saw puffins and um, at a lot of the times we were the only people on the road for hours and hours and hours and we didn't see another person. I understand now that two years later it has completely changed and like tourism has gone up so much. But oh, yeah. back then you know, there was nobody and it was so cool. I, I don't think I'd ever been to a place that was so like not populated at all. <laughs> sure. That's yeah. kind of how I felt about Ireland with, yeah, with the I, exception I of like Dublin, Belfast, Galway, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the big cities, everything in between is just farm. It's just green yeah. and just rolling hills and mountains and just nothing. It's great. Mm -hmm. the, really the, really cra cool. the crazy thing about Iceland is like, it's all like volcanic <laughs> Yeah. and lava-y and very Game of Thronesy, and literally it, yeah exactly and it was really it was just really different and that was before we knew that Rogue One was filming there or oh, the, yeah. they did some pickup shots of The Last Jedi there and we had heard that but like didn't really know how much had actually happened because I think pickup shots of Starkiller Base are, were, were there um but I we didn't really know this is pre the Force Awakens so like sure. we didn't know anything. <laughs> sure. I had but a similar a, thing in Ireland. A, yeah, like did y you went though? If you went last year, like you knew that y I you knew, obviously yeah. went to Skellig Michael for one reason, right? Yes. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Where's Luke Skywalker?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and um, there's the weird, the, the interesting thing about Ireland is they have cities and it's divided by counties, right? Mm -hmm. And the counties have a city within them with the same name. So, like, there's, like, um, like Donegal. There's Donegal, mm -hmm. Donegal County, but then there's a place called Donegal within Donegal County. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, let's figure this out. And I went post-Episode 7, obviously pre-Episode 8. And they were saying in Episode 8 they filmed a lot of the things that weren't on Scaling Michael in Donegal. So mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, sweet. So I drove, like, three hours north to the town of Donegal only to find out they meant Donegal County. The place was in Malinhead, which was like another four hours. Oh, I was like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I saw, <laughs> I saw Skellig Michael. Yeah, yeah, that's like Luke's that's good. that's really the main thing, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know, I get, I, I have a picture of me just pointing. I'm like, he stood right here. It's and that's, so awesome. That's the only reason to do anything, right? Totally. But what other places have you been? I love traveling, personally. Um, I've been. <laughs> a lot of places i good have been to most of europe um i have never been to asia mm -hmm. but that's happening in 2018 hopefully and Sweet. i have been to egypt and morocco what um yeah so cool <laughs> it was what? really fun what was that did you see the pyramids no, it's yes of course Cairo, you can't right? go to egypt without yeah the pyramids i agree um, and it, it was awesome um, that was when we were, my family was living in London. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of unsafe now, I think. Yeah, but probably, probably I, a little bit. I think it, it was right before Arab Spring. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I feel really lucky that we were able to go as Americans and not feel like, I don't know, in the middle of a conflict. Sure. Sure. Totally understandable. Yeah. And, um, then I've been to a lot of the Caribbean islands and same, same. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I I love traveling. I think it's uh, I think traveling is good for people. You know, oh yeah, gives you, gives I am you a broader a perspective firm on life. In that. Yes. Yeah, you know, you Definitely. see how another culture lives, and then it's just. And I'm not gonna say it makes you a better person, but it really helps. You know. <laughs> Completely. But Completely. I dig it. I dig it. You touched on, and this is something that I've always wanted to ask you about. You work for a company that does food stuff. <laughs> and the pictures you post, I don't understand them, but I like them. What is <laughs> what is going on there? <laughs> what do you mean? You have it's like is it a is it food testing? Yeah, so I okay. work in a test kitchen, but I do their social media, so I have like nothing to do with food and like making the food or cooking it. Sure, I just sure. Promote it. Sure. Um, you but get to eat I, it? yes, all yes, the time, perks. and I, I work in a test kitchen, so we have. We're always developing recipes, like bad versions, good versions. Um, and when no one eats all of them, they get put in a take-home fridge. And at the end of the day, 
or during the day I sit right next to the take home fridge. We can take whatever comes out of the kitchen basically home with us. So what? I, I often don't have to do a lot for dinner It's or lunch. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> That's that like a huge great. perk. Yeah. My dad, um, one of like the million jobs he had was working at the, the Hershey factory. Oh in my Pennsylvania, gosh. And he worked in the Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh and my if, gosh. If any of them like wasn't perfect, they just throw them out. So he just got a box and just would leave with a ton of Reese's peanut butter cups. That is so awesome. Every time my family drives through Pennsylvania and we go through Hershey, we always open our windows because you can smell the chocolate. Yeah. So awesome. Is it so true awesome. that the street lamps are Hershey Kisses? It's is true. It... What? It's true. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> These are, this is on my list of things to see. <laughs> it's that a thing awesome. to see. Yeah, that is awesome. Because I always wondered. I see you post some like really cool pictures. <laughs> of like different types of food in like a form. I was like, I don't know what it is, but I'm into it. Yeah. And that's neat. That's neat. I love talking to people who've done things that I didn't know exist. You know, I'm like, oh, of course. Like, I don't, what is a test kitchen? I don't even know what that is. Um. So basically my company makes a ton of cookbooks or a TV show on PBS oh. and a test kitchen generally develops recipes. So instead of like, you know, throwing some stuff in a pot and then writing it all down and then publishing it. We test it exhaustively, sometimes over a hundred times in order to give you the best recipe. So a test kitchen is just constantly refining a recipe. What? That's pretty yeah. cool, actually. Oh yeah. It's awesome. It's really a great place to work. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> if you can just hop on in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. And yeah. it's, and it's, it's cool that like, this day and age, you know, you need social media and PR and stuff like that. And it opens jobs. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And just food, food. I, I like food as well. Yes. There's a lot of things that, you know, intersect that are yeah. really good. In yeah. My job right perks now. on perks. I see, yes. why, I see why you moved up to Boston. Yeah. Gotta it's follow great. It. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You went, did you, you went to Celebration this year, didn't you? I did. And it was so awesome. Ooh. I, I feel like we crossed paths, but I didn't actually meet you. <laughs> I think so too. I did because I was at the Dorky people. Diva meetup. What briefly? Were you? Yes. <laughs> Were you at the first one? Because I think she did more than one. Um, I was at. Were they in different locations? Because I can tell I you which they, one. Was. I think they were in the same location. But All it was right, like, well, there was one on Sunday, and there was one that wasn't on Sunday. And I was, I was at the one, at that, the one wasn't. that wasn't on Sunday. <laughs> okay, but yeah, we were totally within proximity. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I I really just said hi to Savannah and then kind of left because I, I was busy. But um, sure. I I wish that my big wish for Celebration was that I met more people and that I wish Celebration was like a two week affair. <laughs> really, You're telling me Celebration is <laughs> the best thing ever. It's the best. So, yeah. what'd you do at Celebration this year that was like the best thing ever for you? I was I was at the fortieth panel. So jealous. <laughs> and well, don't be. I had to wait in line for like twenty hours. But so did I, but I didn't get in. It's fine. Ooh. See, I got. <laughs> what time did you get in line? Um, Caitlin got in. I didn't. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got in. We got in line at like ten thirty. Ten nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine thirty. Oh, well, there's your problem. <laughs> I know. They I told would... us that we were gonna like potentially be in, but then people cut our line. And we were gonna get in, and I don't even know. It, it's a long story that we have documented on one of our episodes. <laughs> sure, yeah, it is good. It <laughs> but, is good. And we'll yeah. get to that because I'm gonna <laughs> I'm geeking out on that. But uh, yeah, we got uh, a few buddies of mine. We got in line at two o'clock in the oh, afternoon. So jealous. But I'll tell you what, we were in the fifth row, right oh. in front of John Williams. My gosh. To this day, so, I don't know who orchestrated that panel, but mm -hmm. like I owe them, I don't know, money or like a hug or something because it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I'm sure. How, how they unveiled it, like the, the order of the actors that they had up there and it's like slowly got bigger. You start with George Lucas for a solid 20 minutes talking about Star Wars, which is rare, and then gets bigger, gets bigger, does a tribute to Carrie Fisher and you're crying and mm -hmm. then you look to your right and some curtains open and there's John Williams. And then you're just a mess. So but, when you, if you were really close to John Williams, yeah, did you have any idea that that orchestra was right there? Not a clue. That Not is incredible. Yeah, I like I, literally fit five rows. I was watching the live stream and like 
in in like that other room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was just like so shocked that like I couldn't really believe that people wouldn't know that he was right there because <laughs> Of course, those instruments have to warm up or something, right? But they must I guess have done it, it before. Yeah, so brilliant. And like, how did they pull that off? A full orchestra? What the heck? <laughs> it, they stuck him into like a corner. It was it's amazing. It, there wasn't a whole lot of room. And what was great was, so the the Carrie tribute came out, right? We're all crying. And then he looks <laughs> to the right, and John Williams turns around while people are like about to go crazy and applauding, and he just like puts his finger up to, finger up to his mouth and just like shh shh shh, shh quiet quiet, and then played some music. And you're like, oh, I can't do this. And it was oh, it was incredible. Oh, so incredible. awesome. Incredible. Because that was one thing, like, I had, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say a name, but I had insider information that Harrison Ford was going to be there. So I was like, okay, I'm, ex- I'm excited for this. And I'm watching, you know, they got Mark, they got 3PO, they got all these people. And I'm like, hmm, the only person they're missing here is Harrison Ford. Well played, whoever orchestrated this. Yeah. And so I got to watch kind of everyone freak out when Harrison Ford came in. And I was like, the one in the know. <laughs> um, but nobody knew John Williams was going to be there. That's the thing. I had heard that George was coming, but Same. I didn't know Harrison was coming. I didn't know John was coming. And we need to talk about who your contact is because we got to sync up. On that. <laughs> I uh, you might already know them. Perhaps. I'm sure I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. Um, the but John was like seriously the biggest surprise, and I don't think we'll ever get as good of a surprise like that no. in our time again i i just can't imagine it you know? i don't think oh. there'll ever be another panel to that magnitude me I mean, neither it Kathleen was just there were so many things going for it everyone you know? yeah 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 for real everyone god it was so good it was, uh, that was definitely the highlight of the whole the entire convention was that mm-hmm. and then the next was actually probably the dorky diva meetup actually that was like a significant experience for me i'm and sure I, like, I got like on the on the Dorky Diva show, I think the last one that Savannah and I did, I got like all emotional at the end of it. I was like, "This is a big deal for me. You don't understand." Um, <laughs> everyone was just so nice, um, which has not been my experience with the fandom up until this point. Because, really? Because I loved the prequels. Oh, me a, too. A lot, and yeah. people that I grew up with did not. So for me, it was like I love all of this Star Wars so much, and I couldn't talk about it to people that I knew because they didn't like the Star Wars that I liked as well. So it was yeah. like this weird sort of thing where I'm like, hey, you like Star Wars? But they're like, yeah, but not the prequels. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I want to talk to you about these things. Um, it's always then... the worst. I've had that conversation <sighs> a jillion times too. I know. Yeah, it's insane. The fact It's basically colloquial that like <laughs> you, you bring up Star Wars and you say you like Star Wars nine out of ten times. The next thing somebody says is, yeah, but not the prequels. I'm like, always. hold the phone for a second. <laughs> you just don't get it. <laughs> It's like uh, when you talk about how you have a Star Wars podcast and people are like, yeah, so you love Star Wars. Like, do you talk about the prequels? <laughs> yeah, right. And you're like, yeah, actually, extensively. <laughs> you, you, mean, you mean the front half of the story? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to skip a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I just throw uh, down the gauntlet where I'm like, qui my favorite character. They're like, hold <laughs> on. Like, take a seat, friend. Take a seat. Yeah. <laughs> but how? Okay, so you have a great story about your uh, – your your Star Wars initiation involving Episode One in theaters. <laughs> Is it a great story? I think it's kind of like. <laughs> oh, it's a great story. It's a great so, story. So, the first time I saw, I was like five when Episode One came out, mm-hmm. and my dad took me to the theater, and I couldn't handle the pod racing because it was just so loud <laughs> that I had to be taken out because I couldn't stop crying and like screaming. It's just, like, so ironic. (laughs) Years later, I think about that, and I'm like, wow. If only she knew then what she would become. Exactly. There's hope for everyone. So so anyone that, like, has kids, and then they're they're like, I just want to show my kids Star Wars, and, oh, she's crying. Don't worry about it. Give it a little bit. Yeah, just wait. She might become Charlotte. Yeah, just wait until, like, the mom shows them. A New Hope. <laughs> That's yeah. what happened to me. And then yeah. I was, I really liked it, but I didn't love, love it until I saw Revenge of the Sith in theaters when Ooh. I was 11. And that really solidified my Star Wars fandom completely. It's uh, it's my favorite, episode three. Oh, really? It is, because it, it was like, I loved the originals, 
and I loved the prequels, and it was like the perfect final piece of the story. Totally. If that was the last Star Wars movie we ever got, I would have been satisfied forever. Oh, I for sure. I, I mean, I was satisfied then. I I love it. It's probably you know when it all boils down to it, it's probably my favorite Star Wars movie. But I generally say that I generally say like my favorite Star Wars movie is Empire. But sure, I sure. I think that for a lot of reasons, R- Revenge of the Sith holds like a very dear spot in my heart. <laughs> oh yeah, same. It, it's my favorite movie. Like I've seen it. I, I mean, I've seen them all hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. But three is the one that like I cry every time, even now. Like I just I know it's coming, and it's what just... gets you. Okay, so there are two parts that will get me every single time. Order sixty six. Uh huh. Because I'm Jedi Brian. Jedi are right. like my thing, yeah. and to see all of these lights just extinguish, um, specifically Kiati Mundi. When right. he's like, they're on Magito, and then he, it's like, oh, we got the bridge, and he's telling him to come on, and then he turns around, and that split second of him realizing what's about to happen breaks me. Mm. Um, and Obi Wan, uh, when he says, "You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you." Done. It's, it's amazing. Can't handle it. He got he got robbed of some sort of award because my God, it was so good. I I, I love him to the Sith so much. It's so nice to hear someone who loves it as well. Oh, trust me. You want you want some prequel love? You came to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the The thing is, is that is that Order sixty six scene when you saw it in theaters in two thousand five. Were mm-hmm. you as overwhelmed at that point than you are now having the Clone Wars and like the rearview mirror? Because to me, Ooh. that scene is totally magnified and so much more sad because we now oh, sure. know these Jedi so well, especially Plo Koon. Exactly. Plo Koon is like, oh my god. When you binge the Clone Wars and then go watch that, oh, you're man. like, oh no. <laughs> it's so bad. And then given his history with Ahsoka. Yes. And and he just gets shot out of the sky. Yeah. It's too... Mm, can't handle it. I don't do well, Charlotte. I don't do well. <laughs> it's my it's my thing. Jedi are my thing. That's why it's it's interesting you say Empire because, you know, majority of people when asked will probably say Empire. I know. It's like, uh, it's such a standard answer. <laughs> yeah, which, I mean, it is incredible. It is incredible. Mm-hmm. I have a deep love for Lando, so I love Empire as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm i a, I'm a Return of the Jedi guy. I love I, episode six. I love them all. <laughs> yeah, t- yeah, exactly. Exactly. Same. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but, um, so you, how did you and Caitlin meet? Um, so as you know, I lived in Georgia for most of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and Caitlin and I went to the same elementary school, middle school, and we really became friends when in sixth grade, like we had a class together and I wouldn't stop talking about Hayden Christensen. And she just kind of became (laughs) the ear (laughs) that I would kind of talk to, um, because she sat next to me and, that's kind of the beginning of our friendship really. And I introduced her to star Wars and like, she <laughs> hasn't really looked back since. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. She had never seen it before then. Um, and yeah, uh, we have just been friends forever. She visited me when I lived in London and, um, twice and it, it, it's great. We've been friends forever. Really. That is, that is amazing. Hayden Christensen was the end. That's, that is <laughs> Always. Genius. That's yeah. right. You met him. Yeah, I did. At Celebration. Him. It was you the did. best. You got a yes. picture with him. Yes. <laughs> what, was, what was your experience? My Talk experience? Me it. Um, I feel like at this point I've talked about it so much that like I kind of don't even remember it anymore. Like it, <laughs> it has like moved on because it was such like an emotional point in my life that like, sure, my sure. brain just can't handle the emotions. Sure. Like <laughs> I... Wait in that stupid line by Tops, right? Oh, oh my God. For real. <laughs> and For real. I was in the front and somehow I got in the back. Like, that's not really part of the story. But sure. my celebration were, like, the worst thing yeah. ever. Oh, agreed. And, um, anyway, the I met Hayden, finally up there, was freaking out and, like, sweating. And then... <laughs> <laughs> It's it's and, the chosen one. It's understandable. Yeah, yeah. And then I got up there and I was like worried about how I was gonna look because like this was the photo that would like be everywhere. Right. This is my profile picture <laughs> had, for the rest of my life. My life. Like <laughs> I had been waiting for this moment since I was eleven. Like there was just so much oh, leading yeah. up to it. And I was 
Um, I hugged him and I hugged him for too long that they asked Ooh, me to good. stop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're going to do it, you go for it, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was lovely and really nice. And we took a great photo and mm -hmm. his jacket basically matched my outfit. It was just Ooh. great. It was perfect. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a better experience, honestly. That's amazing. I was so happy that he came. Me too. I in like, I feel like the fan reception was generally positive for him. I agree. I agree. And I think that he probably walked out of there like, wow, like I do have a pretty strong fan base of Star Wars fans. Like the Star Wars fans that are real fans who go to conventions, like they really like me. You know, yeah. I, I hope I hope that he came out of that like that. I agree. I totally agree. I was so happy when his autographs went on sale and sold out like immediately. Yeah. Because I felt like my prequel loving heart like felt justified. I, I know. Like, ah, nobody else sold out. <laughs> yeah, it was just like it was just so nice and gratifying. Like... It was. It was. It's like we're not alone. <laughs> People yeah. talk trash about it, but when it really comes down to it, are you gonna pass up a chance to meet Hayden Christensen? No. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. Skywalker. Exactly. For real. I got his autograph. I got I, uh... his autograph too, but I didn't meet him. What did again. you get signed? Did you get a picture? Um, just a picture. Because I, oh. I have Carrie's and Mark's and I needed Hayden's. Ooh. Now I just need Natalie's, you know. <laughs> oh my God. I've been in love with that woman my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, honestly. Yeah. I don't blame you at all. We'll get to her. Yeah. That's a whole, that, she's getting her own time on here. <laughs> so tell me about your experience with Hayden though. With Hayden? I, so I, I had this poster made um, a few years back by a graphic designer buddy of mine. And it's just a black poster with the Star Wars logo outlined in yellow and then stars throughout it. Mm -hmm. And I've got like, I think I'll, I'm up to, I think 11 autographs now. Um, That's so cool. I've I always mean, wanted to do that. It's cool. Like, See, have I have I something like that everyone yeah. signs. That's right. That's right. And like with a poster, you know, I can frame it and hold it in a room somewhere and be like, oh, look, everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got like, I've got Ian McDiarmid, Carrie Fisher, uh, Billy D. Williams, Peter Mayhew, Hayden Christensen. I, it's a lot. You've got a um, lot. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Luckily, people have been coming to Florida. And if there's a Star Wars guest and they come to Florida, I'm driving. That um, makes sense. Like, I would do the same thing. Right, right. Especially when you have, like, a specific piece. Because I love screenshot pictures with their autograph. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fantastic. But when you've got, like, ten of them, just for the sake of wall space. I, or, yeah, completely. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, like the po I like the poster thing, personally. Um, I, I wish I went for the poster thing. Like, it's too late now. Yeah. I can't. Like, <laughs> I wish I thought about that in, like, 2010 at my first celebration. Like, I, 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 I ugh, if I could go back now. <laughs> they had those, like, little um, top stickers, you know, for, like, authenticity of autographs or whatever. Right. And uh, the guy looked at my poster and he's like, eh, you can just keep going. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, okay, thanks. But the, the, the when I was in line... The woman in front of me just mm -hmm. started crying in front of him. Like, she just broke. And she was like, oh, my God, I've, I've waited so long to, to meet you. And he, because he's Canadian, he's, like, the nicest person ever. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't know what to do. So he just kind of like, are you okay? It's good. Oh. Okay. And he was so nice, and she just couldn't talk and, like, shook her head and was, like, crying. And he goes, well, you know, I, I hope you have a good day. And, like, sign an autograph. Oh. Like, oh, Anakin. <laughs> there is still good in you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel yeah, bad for so... the woman and Hayden. I know. Honest. I know. <laughs> I'm just glad I could be there to talk about it with you. Yes, but... definitely. <laughs> but no, he was so nice. I'm so glad he came. He was. He was. Um, he was a highlight. I, I met Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. You know, we met so the chosen awesome. one, the best pilot in the galaxy. I I hope he comes back for another one because like even though I felt I felt like this was a once in a lifetime opportunity I might have to do it again I might have to meet him again uh, right <laughs> yeah right you have yeah. to it's Anakin Skywalker Charlotte exactly you, just, you can't pass this up <laughs> no but it's so good so good um so Anakin the perfect uh, segue to this Padme mm. I have a deep love for Padme good as do you I like I'm obsessed she's just the per so, fun story, kind of, I guess. I guess not really. Um, <laughs> so, not really a story. So, growing up, I never understood the appeal of a damsel in distress. Mm -hmm. Like, even as a kid, I just remember being, like, six, and, like, some of the other guys were like, oh, yeah, they want a princess to save. And I was like, I'm pretty sure she can save herself. Like, it's not, the window's not that high. She can yeah. totally put some curtains together and go. <laughs> and Leia 
was like the first like, okay, that's what I'm talking about. She picked up a blaster too and got in it and I'm into it. And then Padme showed up and I was like, what is this? Anakin had the right, uh, he had the right idea of calling her an angel. And her in episode one, the whole decoy thing like blew my mind. So cool. You it's know, so cool. Like, I, I mean, obviously we know like that's her because uh, I know what Natalie Portman looks like and Kira Knightley mm-hmm. looks very much like her, but I, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was just so cool to see a queen who became a senator who also is involved in aggressive negotiations. <laughs> yeah. It's but so awesome. Padme's the Padme. best. You love I do. Padme quite a bit. Uh, what is I it do. about Padme that you enjoy? You know, it's so interesting because I feel like I always come up with a different answer for this. And I, it's with good. this project that a bunch of other fangirls and I are working on, um, the Padme podcast, Which is great. it's kind of like my kind of mission is to like nail down exactly why I love Padme and it's yeah. it's very hard for me like I feel like I sought a lot of in- inspiration from Padme from her political service and her like sure. immense caring like Padme is so similar to Luke and yes. all the aspects I love about Luke are in Padme and a woman and someone that I can look up to and relate to Sure. Um, I always found that also I'm a, I love fashion and I, I love that part oh. of her. Like I can't, I can't like put that to the side. Like that's a huge reason why I love Padme is the clothes. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> and she has more clothes than any character ever. <laughs> oh yeah. No, she has the, the best wardrobe in all of star Wars. Like it's a fact <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know. Why, why else do I love her? I just think she's really compassionate, but also flawed. And I always mm. appreciate that in the character. Sure, sure. Padme is a great podcast, by the way. I've listened Thanks. to it. I really enjoy it. I was like, oh, sweet, more Padme. I'm down. Yeah, and much you just more had Padme. a new episode couldn't drop. Yeah, I'm not in this one, but... Um, <gasps> Well, yeah. lost a listener. <laughs> oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'll listen. Uh, you should listen, though. It's a really good discussion about The Phantom Menace. So. Oh, I'm definitely in. Yeah. Gotta I listen. Love, I love episode one. Yeah. Gargon's my favorite character. Who's your favorite character? Do you have a favorite? Padme's my favorite character. Padme's sure. your favorite. Good yeah. choice. Yeah. Good choice. I'm into it. And then I down the line, my top five are always going to mm. be Skywalkers. So it's... Hey, nothing wrong with that. It's, it's Star Wars Padme, is literally about them. Yeah. Padme, Anakin... Leia, Luke, and I think uh, Ray. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe once we find out who her parents are, we'll see if she earns the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, <laughs> so who right do you on. think Ray's parents are? Ooh, okay. We're gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna put. A, I don't. Edit There's no wrong answer. There's no levels. wrong answer. I'm gonna say spoiler alert, just in case I'm correct. Okay. Um, have you played Battlefront? I haven't, but I know what you're about to say. It's very possible that uh, it's, you know. Yeah. Versio and Miko. Could but happen. I will say, I, I thought and wanted it so bad to be Luke, and then I read Bloodline. I know. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that ruins every theory I had, just timeline-wise. <laughs> so it's like, oh, so Kylo Ren's fall to the dark side happened within the last five years. Rey got dropped off when she was eight. That doesn't add up. No. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. So many, so many things in episode eight that I'm like, I, you know, my biggest thing. I went off on <laughs> me and Savannah like went off the rails the last time we recorded. That was such a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it you very great. much. I'm I'm quite proud of that one because <laughs> we hadn't talked in so long. I was like, we're just doing this. It was and, great. <laughs> yeah, was, we got passionate. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, <laughs> but um, uh. I'm just I hope Luke is okay. That's my biggest thing because I adore Luke in episode 6 and you get a little bit of that in Battlefront 2. You get like a Luke mission and he's yeah. so just everything that's right, you know? And then in the latest trailers that we've seen is like you have Rey on the island with Luke and then there's a quick shot of Rey with Snoke. I'm like, "Okay, I understand Rey Snoke. Got, where's Luke? Is he okay?" <laughs> Because he was with her, now he's not with her, and she's with Snoke. What happened to Luke? Hashtag uh, where's Luke? <laughs> for real. For real. Which is like the unofficial title of episode seven. Yeah. But, <laughs> exactly. That's uh, that's who I think. I think it's either going to be nobody, you know, just random mm-hmm. something, or uh, it's going to be Aiden and uh, Del. 
just because the whole tie-in, because they can even play that in episode eight. You know, Luke finds out who her parents are for some reason. It's like, oh, I knew your dad. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of that'd be a nice little through line. But I'm down for anything. I am too. I, I am too. I don't. I don't have a concrete theory. I don't. I don't know. So I think she's going to be a nobody. Probably. I think that even though the timeline might not line up, I think that nothing is final until like Lucasfilm says it's so. Oh, for so sure. So maybe she could be still a Skywalker. I don't know. Like I just feel like everything's on the table, and I can't choose until. Oh, I don't I'm know. With you. My I'm with you. Caitlin's a hundred percent in on Kenobi, kind of. <laughs> But she's like Kenobi, no one, basically. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm for the no one in that one. <laughs> I know I'm not. I'm not for the Kenobi either. It's yeah, <laughs> I, mm, doesn't Kenobi. really work for me. But then it's like, no. it's like anything's possible, like you said. Anything's possible. It's like the, it's just anything's possible. Yes, for sure. <laughs> the the Kenobi one though, you you'd have to believe that Obi Wan would like take his eyes off the prize. <laughs> you so know what true. I mean? So it's true. Like, the entire fate of the galaxy rests in this one kid and for Ben to be like, mm, he'll be fine for a little bit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Obi-Wan is like the Jedi. Yeah, you know? for sure. Believes in it till the very end is like, and in rebels. I love the fight between him and Maul. Me too. I was just going to say that. Um, it was so good. It it really got everything so right. About Obi-Wan and Maul and, I, even it was just such a good learning moment for Ezra in that moment. It was just, that was such an amazing episode that I really want to rewatch actually. Now that we're talking about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Right? Savannah and I did a discussion on that when she did not like the fight. I know. I she, like, she's, she's funny talk. about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's the best. Yes. She is. <laughs> she'll be like, I love this. I'm like, mm, not into it. And then <laughs> I'm team Porg and she's a uh, Volp Texas. The I haven't foxes. actually said that out loud yet, and I feel like I'm just going to br- butcher it. That's <laughs> okay. I did, I did it first. <laughs> <laughs> Vulp, and then Vulptices, right? Yes, yes. Vulptices, Vulptex. Which, Vulptex is really hard, because you want to yeah. say Vulpix. Exactly. And it's not Vulpix. <laughs> it's it's different. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm I, I'm into the Porgs, man. How do you feel about Porgs? I love them. I, I don't think... What's not to love? They're adorable. I think right? that... Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know how you could be anti them. Right? <laughs> I like everything. Yeah. Yeah, Savannah. <laughs> yeah. Fear, 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 fear. Shots fired. Exactly. Yeah, I'm in, I'm into it. I'm into it. But I I don't know. What are you looking forward to in eight besides everything? <laughs> um, literally everything. I am all in on the Kylo Ren redemption arc. I know it's controversial. Oh. <laughs> so I want that. But it's okay. And if anything, I just I'm excited for more complicated characters. Um, sure. And if that means a redemption arc, then great. If it mm-hmm. doesn't, then like I'm excited for more complicated, you know, Ray dealing with a lot different choices and Kylo dealing with different choices and being introduced to Finn having to grapple with him being part of the rebellion now uh, resistance. I always do that. Sure. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just I'm excited for this next chapter, really. In every aspect <laughs> same same what I, about I'm, you luke luke yeah. is luke is first and foremost because in six he be he like basically became a jedi you know he still had a lot to learn but he like was in tune with the force and was just going you know mm-hmm. he was the hope for the future totally and now he's like scared and you're like what are you doing man what's uh what's going on come get a <laughs> come get a hug and come back we need you and i'm um, just very very worried about luke I love I love all the new characters. Like I've I've said in other podcasts, like I'm not I didn't love Seven. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like, oh my god, this this experience for me. I loved the characters a lot. Ray, Finn, Poe, BB eight, like Yeah. I loved all the new characters. Absolutely loved them. The movie was okay for me. But for eight, I'm I'm very excited to see Luke train somebody. I wanna know what happened to Luke with the Academy, you know we got to believe we're going to see something or at least get the story of what happened. I think we will. Um, so I think. I think so as well. They have to, right? Yeah. I'm so excited for that. Oh my gosh. I can't yeah, wait. Just, just answers, you know? <laughs> yeah. We, Cause we got, we got zero answers in seven. We thought like, Oh, this zero. is like 30 years after episode six. We're going to find out what happened. No, you're not. You're going to be thrown into the here. And it's like, Oh, this is what's going on. We're not gonna tell you anything about what happened. So this is the one that's like, Oh, 
Luke exiled himself. Let's find out why, because we think we know. You know, it could mm-hmm. be could be anything. I'm secretly hoping for a moment where you see like Luke's X wing in the water by Skellig Michael or Octo, and he uses the force to lift it up. And like, oh, a parallel, I think that's you know, definitely gonna happen. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm gonna ugly cry. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, I think be, that like oh, I, I think I'm gonna have trouble seeing in this movie because yeah. I'm crying so much. <laughs> for sure, when they played that uh, that football TV spot, whatever it was called, the second <laughs> or third trailer. Uh, the first time we hear Luke speak, the whole time while I was watching it, um, <laughs> that you just hear, you know, I've only seen this raw strength once before, and I was like, oh my god, Luke's talking! Luke is talking! Luke is talking! It neighbor, Luke's talking! And just to hear him say words, um, excited me. But then he said, "It's time for the Jedi to end," and I'm like, "No, no, mm, we're n- we're not doing that. <laughs> Without the Jedi, there can be no balance. So, uh, <laughs> Luke, we need to have a talk." So eight is uh it's gonna be a whole lot of uh it's gonna be a whole lot of questions. He's gonna learn. He knows. I think so. I'm my hope is that Ray shows him that there's hope. Because yeah, I I'm he's, guess, he's I'm super jaded he's... right now and yeah. Ray's gonna show up and change everything. Like he's hurting because he feels responsible. You know, and it's gonna be like the whole Spider Man complex or the Batman complex where the hero shows up and then the villain showed up to counteract the hero. So he's like, If I take myself out of the equation maybe these bad things won't happen anymore he's wrong but perhaps that's what he thought completely um, so we'll see i just i just want him to be okay me too me too that's my, <laughs> that's, my bi- that's my big thing just make him okay <laughs> but um you've read you've read a good amount of the new canon what do you think of it i love it i i, me I too. don't think there's a lot to dislike i think that um if you kind of just take a step back and look at all the new canon from like uh, i don't know and like analyze it like as a whole sure. we've gotten like extremely character driven stories and like kind of oh, yeah. microcosms of stories of the ga- within the galaxy like and i think that is so cool and you know we've learned so much about jin and rebel rising and oh, like getting all rebel this rising. background of leia and it's just like i i i think it's awesome i every single thing that comes out of the new canon i i read and i love <laughs> Same, same. I've got a couple duds, but uh, yeah. by and large, my God, it's so good. Rebel Rising is one that I really liked. It was so the whole, good. The, it just gave you all of the backstory you needed for Saw. Mm-hmm. You know, I really enjoyed it. Catalyst is another huge, huge favorite of mine. Oh, yeah. I finished that like in line for Rogue One that night. And the thing is, is that it really enhanced my viewing, I think, because I really had just, just finished it. And like then Rogue One started and it was awesome. Sure. Um, I finished it a few days before, and I was like, oh, snap. And then uh, when I saw the movie, I, I always explain Catalyst as I've never read a book that I would consider a companion to a movie. You know, you've got Expanded Universe where it's all this backstory and other thing, but Catalyst, like, changes everything, especially that opening scene with Galen, Lyra, and Krennic. Totally. You know, if you read the book and then you see that scene, it is a totally different experience. Oh, yeah, like, you come into... Rogue One, like actually knowing who these characters are and like their history and just everything makes a lot more sense. Oh yeah, um, it's it's just great. I love it. Recommend it to everyone for sure. My uh, I have wow. We both do so many podcasts now that I'm thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I have another podcast called Brian and David Talk Star Wars, and it's like my actual Star Wars podcast. Because this one's this one, the interesting podcast is about like it's about you and getting to know people, and I just like to get to know people and talk and. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, inevitably, it turns into Star Wars because I love it. You love it. What are you going to do? <laughs> exactly. Um, but in Brian and David Talk Star Wars, we did a Rogue One slash Catalyst review. And it's actually longer than the movie. It's like two and a <laughs> half hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because I, I saw it 23 times in theaters. Oh, my gosh. That is like a record I haven't heard before. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I bought the ultimate ticket. That they did for Rogue One. Oh. It it was a thing that Regal did. It was a steel card with your name engraved on it. It said Rogue One. It was really, really cool. And it was like 100 bucks. And you could see it once a day, every day, in any format, as long as it's in theaters. Wow. That was... Whoa. (laughs) I know. I saw it in IMAX like seven times. That is awesome. I I would have done that too if my theater at home was Regal. It's not. It's AMC. But like that's, that's super cool. Wow. 
Yeah, so I saw it. I saw it a lot because previously, like, I saw episode three nine times in theaters. I saw mm-hmm. episode seven nine times in theaters, and that was like my thing. I'm gonna see it nine times, and then this ultimate ticket came out. And I was like, well, that's over. <laughs> Everything <laughs> changed with the ultimate yes, ticket. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And now with Movie Pass, forget about it. I got Movie Pass. I'm really Isn't excited it about be- it. Have you used it? I haven't used it at all. It like just came. I'm really oh, pumped. The best. I, I see movies that like I don't even want to see just because I can. That's kind of what I'm going to be doing. And, like, I'm just so excited to use it for Star Wars. And it's just going to be great. Right? It, <laughs> yeah. It's it's so easy. I become I call myself, like, an unofficial spokesperson. Because I'm, like, meeting people. I'm like, hey, you got movie pass? Check this out. And I take it out. It's a card. No, no. I've got, like, a pitch. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even used it yet. And I'm, like, selling it to people. <laughs> right? So. It's so good. And it's so easy. Yeah. I, hi- I highly recommend. Can't if wait to use. want to sponsor use. this podcast, I mean, I can't afford it. <laughs> Not I mean, whatever, it it's fine. Because it's so cheap. <laughs> yeah. It's like, send me a shirt that says Movie Pass on it. I'll wear it. <laughs> Seriously. It's so awesome. Do you have a, uh, a favorite new book of the canon? It's um, all good, but do you have, like... I go back and forth between Bloodline and Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Or, I just oh, started Princess of Alderaan. Oh, it's so good. Or Lost Stars. I love Lost Stars. Can't you tell see- I really just love Claudia Gray? <laughs> I was about to say, I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> I, do I think as well. she, she writes Star Wars so well. She it's really awesome. does. She her chapter in a certain point of view was my favorite of the whole book. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Obvious they got reasons. She got everything so <laughs> yeah seriously. She got everything so right there. Oh, it, I love it that. Was, that was one of my favorite pieces of EU like I've ever read. It was just uh, you know so what? Same. Perfect and just God, it was Qui Gon. First off, so you're already on the winning team for me. The but other when it, like explained it. Yeah. The, the the post like being a force spirit and learning and oh so good. So it was good. so good. Oh my gosh. I love it. Again, if you haven't read it and you're listening, like definitely go check that out. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um the the other one that I love from a certain point of view and like spoilers, I guess. Spoilers. Yeah, please, we're way past that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I genuinely love that Yoda and Ben Kenobi Ooh, one. Have you yes. read that? Oh, you know yes. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh yes. The 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 other. <laughs> yes. I yes. like I I was so shocked by what like point of Same. view I was reading and I don't really want to give it away. I'm not gonna give it away. We're not gonna talk I, about the specifics. I kinda wanna give it away. Okay, give it gonna. away. Give it okay, away. Okay, we're gonna do it. So yeah. <laughs> I'll let you say it. <laughs> well it's this just my so show. cool we because can do you what think we want. you think that um the entire time Ben is talking about Luke, but really all Yoda cares about is Leia and like Yoda's whole mindset, basically that by the time he's been in exile was his plan was to train Leia. And like in his mind, Leia was the hope for the galaxy. And I was just like, it made everything, it made so much sense when from Yoda saying there is another, it just like, Oh, it was so good. It was essential piece of reading, I think. For sure. It also like adds deeper context to when Luke shows up and Yoda's like, Oh, he's too old. He doesn't listen. It's whatever. Yeah, you know, he's like, yeah, he's like Luke. totally dismissed it because he's already <laughs> dismissed it in his mind. He he wants to train Leia. Anything. Right. He, his, I his love whole... how he explains it. He's like, you know, Luke, he's he's aggressive, he's impatient. It's like Leia, no, she she's already been in this. She's already she knows who she is. Like, this is the one. And Ben's like, uh, about that. Um, how about we give Luke a shot and he goes no no I remember his dad (laughs) it's just so funny because it's like I I said that before that Luke is I I, like Padme and uh, Leia's like Anakin and it's like all right Yoda you got it all wrong (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) I think Leia's a little bit more impulsive that's right (laughs) yeah (laughs) for real god so good so Star Wars is the best I know isn't it so great i could i feel like i could talk about it for hours i literally do yeah same (laughs) so so this is actually the perfect segue to talk about star wars for hours you are the host of probably my favorite star wars podcast and i listen to a lot of them thank you you are the host of sky talkers yes Uh, it's great thank you i appreciate that yes i want to say why i love it okay because it's very interesting one to hear girls talk about it as weird as that sentence sounds. No, I, I think it's, it's. I think it's very valid, cool. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just different than what is just speaking of a numbers game percentage wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite thing is you guys are about the details. 
you know, and I am very much about the details. That's what I love. I love the lore. I love getting in like somebody talks about the juggernaut, you know, and people know what that is as opposed to like, what is that clone transport? Like it's got the wheels, you know? Yeah. And you did a show. I think it was when you were on the force cast, maybe um, with Savannah, you guys were breaking down the trailer and they're like, yeah, and you've got these big walkers or whatever. And you were like, yeah, yeah, the ATM sixes. And I was yeah. like, that's right. That's right, Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, that happened. <laughs> yeah, I like I like fist bumped the radio. Like, that's what I'm talking about. We know our stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, and I love that you guys are so, you you are really into it. We're and all in. I appreciate in. that. We're all yes. in. <laughs> Thank I love you it. so much. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Because it can, when, you're, when you do a podcast, some people want to play, you know, like the nicer sort of game or whatever. And they're like, they like it. But it's sort of, it feels almost a little too PR. Mm -hmm. sometimes but you guys are like no no no. we we legitimately want to have a in-depth discussion about star wars yeah and like these are my friends these That's... are the people i want to talk to with <laughs> you have to be on you we need to have you on like i've been meaning to have you on for a while it's just gotten really crazy we need you to say have you when on. you say yes, when <laughs> soon um but the the thing is when caitlin and i well, caitlin and i had been following star wars podcasts for years and years and years as i mentioned we've been friends forever and we've been star wars fans as long as we've been friends and right. we've been listening to star wars podcasts and we'd listen to them in the car we'd pause and then give our give our our thoughts and then we'd be like oh man we should really have our own podcast that's right oh man we should really join the star wars fandom blah 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 <laughs> and then finally like at the start of last year we were like okay we're doing it <laughs> it's actually That's happening right. like we're buying microphones like we're figuring this out i'm gonna watch like 500 youtube videos about how to do this same <laughs> and, and i figured it out and now we have a podcast <laughs> and um it's just been awesome and like you mentioned our goal really is to get in depth because our big frustration with podcasts and like i mentioned like we'd listen and we'd pause is We'd really like a point that they were saying, but then they just didn't expand on it in the way that we wanted it to. So we want to be those people that expand on it. <laughs> yes, yes. And as a listener, I appreciate it because <laughs> I'm like, we're just talking about stars. It's like, no, no, no. Star Wars is so deep and it's so many layers. And like, there's so, there. as Luke says, there's so much more. There's so much. You know, and I just, I love that. And I'm about the details. I, I used to carry the Star Wars visual dictionaries with me to school every day. Oh my gosh! Because I, because I just I'm that guy. That's awesome. <laughs> mine are just, mine are all lined up at home. Things. <laughs> yeah, right. You have them, and it's like that's why Pablo Hidalgo is like one of my personal heroes. Yeah. A apart from being just hilarious, <laughs> so um, funny. He like this dude knows everything. Like he's like and Leland Chi. Like they know literally everything about Star Wars, and I'm like, you are who I wish I was. It's, it's so good, and it's crazy. Oh, I, love it. I want their jobs. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, I can't. Oh, that would be so good. I just want to meet the story group and just, like, shake everyone's hand. Yeah. I've I've talked to a couple of people that work at Lucasfilm in, like, the VFX department and the creature department and whatnot, and I told them, I was like, one day I'm going to Lucasfilm, and I'm just going to walk down the halls and shake every single person's hand and be like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, you especially, thank you. <laughs> and I uh, just, it, it means but, like, genuinely. so much more. Oh, 100%. Yeah. That is one thing that... uh. One thing I am for sure is genuine, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I absolutely love your podcast a lot. Thank you. Um, it's a, I wish there were more episodes. I'm not going to lie. I know. Not going to lie. We're busy that's people. Okay. We're, we're working right. on it. We're working oh, on trust it. Trust <laughs> me. I know the feeling. This show was like three month hiatus due to hurricane and whatever. And then Savannah, we didn't podcast for like four months. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to find the time and figure it out, but for sure. it's Especially worth it. You're super edited. Yeah, we do edit a lot. That's kind of the bulk of what takes a while and why we're not weekly, honestly. Sure. You, um, were, you were originally had a longer title. Yes. And now you're just Sky Talkers. We, dro we dropped the This Galactic Life kind of quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets past me, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. The, um, yeah, it just it felt a little wordy, so we're done. <laughs> sure. There you go. It's, I mean, and I'm, I'm still waiting on those stickers. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Yes. Don't worry. <laughs> I've been campaigning for those things for months now. Months. I told you before The Last Jedi, and we have yes. two weeks. So. That's right. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my address. <laughs> okay. But but actually, can you? Yeah, real, Just real. DM me. <laughs> I, need, I need those stickers, like, a lot. Yeah. But, but anyone that does know should definitely check you out. Um, 
I can't believe we've been talking for over an hour already. Yeah, we just, you know, so much to talk about. So much Star Wars, not enough time. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm all about. That's why you have to come on our show. (laughs) You you let me know. But I I warn you, Qui-Gon's probably going to be mentioned at least once. I just can't help it. It's like a compulsion. That's fine. It's it's this weird thing. (laughs) That's It's (laughs) totally fine. We um, it comes back around. You're a huge Rebels fan, right? Yes, I am. You should come on our Rebels discussion show. Let me know. Okay. I am, I am into it, especially now. Rebel. So what do you think of that finale? Oh, so good. Uh, there Crazy, isn't, right? There isn't an episode this season that I've disliked. I am obsessed. It's so I good. Agree. <laughs> I agree. Do you, uh, do you think do you think everyone's going to bite it? I don't know. <laughs> In the beginning, I used to think everyone was going to bite it. I, But now I'm we like, know Hera's I don't fine. know. Hair is fine. Like, uh, that's not who we're referencing, obviously. Yeah, but like, yeah. I, I don't know anymore. The whole I wolf know. thing kind of threw me for a loop because yeah, it could what really is up with that. It could really mean that like <laughs> he just stays there forever instead of dying. I, I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know what they're doing. Yeah. They put. They put. Uh, so Ryan Johnson's got his own trilogy. Yeah. Pumped. Exciting. I haven't actually so talked pumped. about this with like anyone. It's. Oh I, snap! I'm Exclusive. so excited about that. I think that Same. there's so many possibilities and like it's just mm-hmm. gonna deepen star wars even further how how much better can it get than that you know right my thing was like i'm i'm excited for eight but how good must eight be for disney to be like the movie hasn't even come out yet we haven't even seen the numbers but we've seen this movie and we're gonna give you three more to do whatever you want (laughs) yes exactly i mean we're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars into a guy who hasn't even released his movie yet Completely. And it's like the biggest vote of confidence. It yeah. Make, it like maybe overhypes eight for me a little bit because now I'm <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it must be a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh, still, whatever. I'm excited. Ryan Johnson. I think Ryan Johnson is essentially the new George Lucas. Um, uh, you're right. Yeah. Right? So it's I like, love it. and uh, I mean, I think Dave Filoni is like somewhere up there too as the new George Agreed. Lucas. But um, I, yeah, love them both. And, let's have them endure in star wars <laughs> same same it's an exciting time definitely it's an exciting time to be a fan but uh you've given me plenty of your time <laughs> as well um uh, where can people find you online so i'm on twitter at crarity so that's c-r-e-r-r-i-t-y and you can find my podcast sky talkers wherever you can get podcasts and our twitter account is sky talkers pod um so yeah that's where i am at yeah Things and such. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. This was really fun. Yeah, this is awesome. It's good getting to talk, which is like the purpose of the show. Yeah. I I originally started it because I'm a massive Chris Hardwick fan. Yeah. Like huge. I think the Nerdist and just what he's done and everything. And uh, I want to moderate panels. Yeah, you got to do that. So I was like, I I think I could be pretty good at at talking to people. So I started this just to learn about people. Like the, the interesting podcast is called that because I talk to someone whom I find interesting about them. It's awesome. And uh, it's a it, great concept. It, I mean, I don't want to brag, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all just human human nature. Um, but yeah, thank you again for coming on. This has been super fun. Thank um, you, Sky Talkers. Everyone needs to definitely, definitely, definitely check that out. If you're into Star Wars anywhere near as much as I am, you're gonna love it. Um, tell Caitlin I said hi. I will. I will. Hey.